Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to the crack a pack series today We're opening up a pack of homelands uh, Not the most high value set of all time by any means But there are quite a few interesting cards in here and of course we're gonna look at this from a limited perspective So we're gonna do the best we can to actually go through and pick out our pack one pick one if we were drafting this set now This is a much older set. I never actually got to play with it uh, especially during its time, but uh, I also don't know where the rare is, so we're gonna just kind of wing it. Uh, hopefully we get something good that's glaringly obvious, but there are gonna be some really throwaway cards. So we start first with Beast Walkers. It's a one and two white for a summon heroes, I believe. Uh, it's a two two, and you can pay one green and it gains banding until end of turn. Banding is a very useless mechanic. Uh, I would explain what it does, but honestly, because of its lack of relevance, I actually don't even know. Uh, so I apologize, but I don't like this card at all. It's a 2-2 for 3 that's very difficult to cast, and it requires a second color just to give it banding until the end of the turn. That, to me, seems very bad. Uh, evaporate is 2 and a red for a sorcery. It deals 1 damage to each blue uh, creature and white creature. So this is a very much a hate card. Back in the day, hate cards were much more focused. So you saw cards like Tsunami uh, or Wildfires, things like that, that dealt with like an entirety of, an, of a color very, very well. Uh, this obviously is a much more tamed down version. It's just dealing 1 damage to every blue and or white creature. But uh, that is still a powerful ability, really focused on obviously certain colors. Because it's focused on certain colors, that makes it much more of a sideboard card than a mainboard card. But it is pretty powerful, so I I like this more probably than the Beast Walkers, to be honest. Um, not exactly amazing, if I'm going to be completely honest, just because it is so focused and it's only dealing that one damage. But... Uh, especially in a set like this, it's probably going to do its work. So I do like this a little bit more than uh, the card that we had first. Uh, wow. Okay. I may have to move this up a little bit to read it. So Giant uh, Albatross is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a blue. It has flying and you can pay 1 and a, one and a blue uh, to bury all creatures that damaged Giant Albatross this turn. The controller of any of these creatures may pay 2 life to prevent that creature from being buried. Effects that prevent or redirect damage cannot be used to counter this loss of life. Use this ability only when uh, it's put into the graveyard from play. This is a really interesting card. Uh, okay, so there's a lot to this. First of all, it's a 1-1 flyer for 2. Not bad. It's not great, but it's not bad either. Uh, also, the second ability, I feel like just is upside. It's really a lot of text just to say deal with a bunch of creatures, but... Uh, I do think so far this is honestly the best card, unfortunately, that we've got. I don't think it's great by any means, but I do think it's probably the best that we've got. Uh, Dark Maze is a wall. It's a 4-5 for 4 and a blue. You can pay 0 and it can attack this turn. At the end of the, return, at the, end of the turn, excuse me, remove it from the game. Uh, it cannot attack the turn it comes under your control, so you can't just use this ability to give it haste. Uh, actually weirdly really like this card. Uh, I don't think it's amazing by any means, but uh, a 4-5 blocker is going to be good most of the time anyway. Yes, it's 5 mana, but it's a 4-5, and back in the day that's actually pretty good. On top of that, you can choose when you want to give it the ability to actually swing in for damage, so you can actually manipulate this to the best of your ability whenever you need to. Uh, so I do actually like this a little bit more than any of the other cards we've had. I I may be very miscalculating on this pack, but I do apologize if I am. Uh, Torture is an enchant creature for one black. Choose target creature. You can pay one in a black and put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature that this enchants. This is like a really slow kill spell. Uh, obviously, it's going to determine on the creature that it's put on. You could deal with it right away if it's a very low to the ground creature. Or if it's a little bit bigger, obviously, it's going to take some time. But uh, I do kind of like this. It's like... It's removal, but it's really slow. You just have to invest a lot. Uh, so I think it's fine, just not amazing. Uh, it's efficient just to play, so you can get it on a creature pretty early on if you need to. Uh, and then later in the game, if you have some extra mana, it kind of gives you a mana sink, which isn't terrible. Uh, but it just it's a little slow for me. I don't think that this is great, but it's definitely playable, I would say, in this set. That's really important that it's, I say in this set. Uh, in general, this is not a very good card. 
Uh, Willow Fairy is a 1-2 flyer for 1 and a green straightforward creature, but honestly perfectly fine. Uh, I like this card. It's not amazing, but it is a flyer and it has a little bit of a bigger butt, so it's going to be able to deal with stuff pretty early on uh, and hopefully evade around some of the ground blockers, things like that, and just deal a few points of damage. Even if you only get 2-3 points of damage off of this, I feel like it's probably worth it. Uh, so I actually kind of like this weirdly up there with the Dark Maze. Uh, I know that's not amazing. Uh, either, but I do kind of like that. Uh, An Abba Bodyguard is a 2-3 three for 3 and a red, and it has First Strike. A pretty straightforward creature again, but uh, not bad. I think it's a little bit high costed, but First Strike is actually a really powerful ability, especially in these early sets. Uh, it's, it enables you to really, it, it favors combat for you most of the time. So I really do like uh, First Strike, especially Unlimited. I think it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know if it's better than these other cards. I find these Homelands packs very difficult to judge. It's just prerequisite in case you haven't found that out. Uh, but uh, I do kind of like, I mean, I think it's playable. I don't think it's amazing, but I think it's playable. Uh, Labyrinth Minotaur is our last card. It's a 1-4 for a 3 and a blue uh, when it's assigned to block, do not untap during, uh, creatures that it's assigned to block, do not untap during their controller's next untap phase. Okay, honestly, because I'm a bit of a tempo player, I like this card. Uh, I don't think this is an insanely great card, but it's going to be able to deal with a lot of creatures. It's going to be able to stall the game pretty hard. Uh, it's got four toughness, which is pretty tough to deal with for a lot of creatures, especially in this format. The only thing that we saw that actually could is the Dark Maze, and that's a one-shot deal. Uh, and so... I really like this card. I think it's fine. Uh, I would definitely play it because it is going to be able to slow down the game. Uh, and so for that reason, and that's the way that I like to play, I'm going to say that's the card I'll pick. That might be 100% incorrect. Uh, it most likely is because I did not play during Homelands. I also have no clue what our rare was. It was probably Dark Maze, but I might be wrong. Uh, feel free if you uh, disagree to let me know in the comment section below. I'm happy to have that conversation because... Again, especially for a pack like this, I have no clue. I did not play during this time, but it's fun to open. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.